Okay, so today we're going to talk about the difference between long-term and short-term process capability. And, you know, if you're a um, quality practitioner, uh, you're often uh, asked to provide some kind of capability index. So it may be CPK or, or PPK, which is, you know, a way to show a process's output against some kind of requirements. And in order to calculate those values, you need an estimate of the variability of the system. So that's where uh, you can actually do it in two different ways. So let's go ahead and just start with this chart here. And let's assume for a moment that this represents the same process. Okay, so this process may have been running, you know, at some level down here. And then suddenly there was a process shift and it, and it moved up here. But if you look at the variability of the process before, in other words, the amount of wiggle that existed here versus the amount of wiggle that existed here, it's roughly about the same. So, you know, not taking into account this process shift, you know, and looking at the, the standard deviation before and after, you know, before we had a standard deviation of, let's say, 0.938 versus 0.907. So it's very, very similar in terms of uh, the total system variability. So short-term capability actually tries to estimate the true variability of the process without these kind of shifts or instabilities. And the way it does that is either through subgrouping. So let's say you take, you know, sample of size 5, calculate the subgroup average and range, and then use that range to calculate an estimate of the standard deviation or sigma or sigma hat or if you're using an individual individual's chart you might use the moving range so what it's trying to do is try to understand the true variability of the process okay so it's really the inherent process variation that we're trying to calculate um, it's the best or least variation we can expect from a process and it's also a very optimistic uh, estimate to meet the specifications so this is in comparison to uh, the long-term variability. So the difference is here with the long-term variability is you're taking not only the amount of variability here and here, you're throwing everything into a big bucket and calculate the, calculating the standard deviation, including any effects that are a result of this process shift. So here we're actually increasing the distance between all the points from this level here all the way down to here. And if you calculate the standard deviation of everything, you get about 1.9. Okay, So you see roughly twice the standard deviation when you combine everything from that process versus you know the short-term estimate, which is based more on trying to understand the true variability without this process shift. Now, when you do that, when you combine everything together, you know, it is the total process variation over time. Uh, sometimes it's called the total outgoing quality levels. And, of course, the process shifts will make this value larger than the short-term variability estimate. Now, if you have, you know, total, you know, control, statistical control, and, you know, there is no shift like this, and we just have a nice, clean process, then the CPK and PPK values will both use roughly the same estimate of variability. They will be roughly the same, and these values should be a lot closer. But usually what ends up happening is there are some instabilities, there are process shifts, so PPK will actually show a worse process capability index than CPK. Okay. So again, that's essentially the difference between the two. It comes down in the way you measure the total system variability. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there on you know subgrouping and moving ranges, and also on you know how to actually use those sigma values in calculating CPK and PPK or any other type of similar uh, capability measure based on either long-term or short-term uh, variability. I uh, hope this helps and we'll talk to you again.